Just like to say praise the Lord and greetings in the awesome name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God for you for uh, watching and tuning in. Pray that God will bless you and keep you and even you and your families. Amen. My family, you know where you are. Continuing to pray for you. I love you. Miss you. Look forward to seeing you. Christ Temple. Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Look forward to seeing you. Amen. Miss you dearly. Amen. Just continue to pray and for all the the sick and shut in. Praying for the Collin family. Amen. Amen. Mother Eva Collin. Amen. Let's go home with the Lord and we're praying for that family. Love you. We thank God for knowing that God is an awesome God. He, he's got all power and he's and he can he's able to not only just keep you, but he's able to strengthen you. Amen. And he's I thank God for just being God, he's, it is a blessing just to be able to serve him knowing that he can do uh, a variety of things. God is just not limited to just healing, but he can be delivering all at the same time. He can be delivering, healing, and saving, amen, and, and doing it all at the same time. And, th and that is a blessing, amen, to be able to serve such an awesome God. Amen. That's all powerful. He's all knowing. Amen. He, and I thank God for it. Knowing that he's, we know he's omnipresent. He can be everywhere. And he can, and omnipotent. God got all power. Amen. He's, you know, omnipotent. He knows everything. So we're thankful for him, for his word. Knowing that his word is a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. I want to uh, look at something in Peter, in the book of 1 Peter. Amen. Probably do a, uh, a few lessons on from these, these scriptures that I'm going to read out of 1 Peter, the first chapter. I'm just going to read the 13 through the through the 16th verse of this chapter, the 13th through the 16th. Amen. We may look at some, and we'll look at some other scriptures just to bring out a lesson out of these three. First Peter, in the book of First Peter, First Peter, one at the 13th verse through the 16th verse. It reads 13, wherefore gird up the lions of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ my God <laughs> as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for I am holy Amen. God bless your word tonight. We thank you for being on the throne. We thank you for all the glory belong to you, God. Give us understanding. Give us revelation. God, show yourself through by infallible proofs. We thank you through by signs and wonders. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your healing power. Have your way, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. In the
the in these few verses, it is it is something I want to talk uh, from a subject, a test of obedience, a test of obedience, a test of obedience, your obedience to obey God, because it is something in this particular chapter And even this whole book of First Peter, Peter is writing to 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 some saints that are that 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 not only have they gotten saved, and they're on the Lord's side, and, and it is a it is a blessing to be on the Lord's side. It is a blessing, I'm telling you. There's no greater place than you would want to be than on the Lord's side. Out of any type of accomplishment, accolades, or, or whatever you may attain, there's no greater place than to be, than to be in the body of Christ, than to be saved, than to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, I'm telling you. And so now what Peter is doing, he's but the thing that 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 Peter is having to deal with here, he's having to to encourage them, those that are saved, but they are experiencing some some not only some hardship, not only some trials, the trial of their faith, some opposition, persecution, but he's. He's having to encourage them to not only appreciate being saved, but he's also how to how to conduct themselves in the midst of suffering, and also the shepherding, the shepherding of God's people during suffering times. But the thing that that we have got to appreciate and what we encounter and when he writes this here in the 13th he says listen to what he says because a test, a test a test of of obedience a test all of our obedience is being tested to obey God. Because you, you look at the thing that uh, uh, we hadn't been in church like the, uh, uh, in especially in the sanctuary and everybody together and the majority of the time you spend most of your time in, in your in your homes and stuff. And so it, it becomes a test to you. And you will see throughout the Bible here, God tested people. He tested them. He tested their obedience. And God today is still testing his, our obedience. Can we still obey him? We know God has got an all-seeing eye. And we know God knows everything. There's nothing I can do or no place I can hide or uh, uh, nothing I can think about that God does not know. But, but how do how have you respond and how have you been responding by the fact of when you think that nobody don't see you, but then God sees everything. Because that is the time now, and especially and especially when you get to going through a trial, when you get to going through a storm, when you are faced with opposition and circumstances, that's when your obedience will be tested. I'm telling you, your obedience. Can you obey God when you are discouraged? Can you still obey God when you are feeling despair and depressed? 
and feeling like you're all by yourself and wondering if things going to work out, can you still obey God? And this is what Peter had to deal with here as he's encouraging the saints. He's encouraging them because they are encountering some, some, some persecution. And they are encountering some storms. They are encountering some trials. But Peter is not only here in the first chapter want them to appreciate the fact that God has saved them. But when you read this whole book of 1 Peter, you will see where he, 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 he expresses to them expresses to them the type of conduct to have in the midst of suffering and how to shepherd shepherd God's people in the midst of suffering. And so now here he is, he talks about wherefore, the 13th verse, wherefore, wherefore, gird up, gird up the lines of your mind. Prepare your minds for actions. You're saying after that you have got saved, and after that God has, has blessed you to to, 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 to experience salvation. Because if you read this chapter, even in the, 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 the ninth verse, it talks about receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation. The fact that God has saved us and saved you, and God has delivered you, and God has rescued you, and God has healed you and delivered you and brought you through some, 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 some horrific situations and even brought some of us out of some horrific situations. And so now he tells them, because now he plays a call on them, a call to change in their lifestyle, holiness, a lifestyle, a change of lifestyle, living. He said, wherefore, gird up the lines of your mind. Prepare your mind for actions. Because if you can be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because if you can change your mind, then you can see it be reflected in your actions. But as a man so thinketh in his heart, so is he. Because if I'm thinking a certain way is going to be reflected in my actions. My actions are not only the results, but they are the manifestation of what are my thoughts. And this is why in Romans 12, he talks about be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To really, to really appreciate being saved. To really still continue to be, to pass tests after test of obedience and submission and, and to be in subjection and to follow God and to obey him and to proclaim and to declare his word and to do what he say do, you have to change your mind. You have to have a mind change. And you gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be obedience, gotta be the the the, the obedience gotta be from the inside. There's the possibility of the obedience from the inside. It has to be from the inside. And this is why when God fills us with the Holy Ghost, and my God, He's filling us with the necessary. It has to be from the, the inside. Though my outward man perish, but inwardly I'm being renewed day by day. So, so even though I'm, I'm attacked from the outside, I still got the victory on the inside. And so now this is why it got to be obedience, a test of obedience, a test of still being submissive. 
and in submission. A test of being attentive. A test of being heart. To hearken and listen to God. To follow his instructions. Obedience. It has to be from the inside. Because the, the inward. The possibility of obedience being on the inside. Is the result. Of what's manifest on the outside. And so now this is why. A test. A test. We are all experiencing. This test. Can you still serve God? Can you still. Live for him. Can you still praise him. When, when, when you're not in the normal setting. Can you still follow his instructions? Can you still do what he say do? And so now here he, Peter is encouraging them to not only be thankful and to, and, and to appreciate God for the fact that God has saved us. Hallelujah. But then he says, wherefore gird up the lines, prepare your minds for actions so now let this mind be in you which was also in Christ be not performed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind the mind the mind and be sober to be sober if to have some self control because now he said that 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 if I if I prepare my mind for actions and have some self control and the hope to the end because I'm looking faith now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen because now and to hope to the end for the grace. For the divine influence that is to be brought unto you at the revealing, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Because the thing that we've got to be excited about and the thing that we can rejoice about, my brothers and sisters, is that if I can still be obedient and pass the test, while we're still here, we've got something to look forward to when we see Jesus on the other side. And so now it talks about that the, the grace, that the divine influence, not only what we experience here, but having the mindset of him getting us over there, that is to be brought unto you at the revelation at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So now I'm preparing my mind for actions that will be reflected in my response and how I live my life and the thing that we do for the Lord because the reality of it all is that we are all living and doing things with the intent of seeing Jesus, my God, on the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so now you prepare your mind for actions. You have some self-control because we are all looking for the future. Not only what God is doing now, but to have eternal life. For the grace that is to be brought unto you in the revelation, not only has God showed himself, the Lord has showed himself through by infallible proof, through by signs and wonders, divers miracles, healing and saving folks. 
his divine influence breaks chakras that, that is reflected in how we live our life. But the ultimate is that when we see Jesus, the hope to the end, for when we see Jesus on the other side, so it should give you an incentive, my brothers and sisters. It should give you some encouragement. You should be excited. You should be determined. And you should want to be committed to serving God on this side. Because God got some better for you on the other side. But I submit to you now. You got to hang on in there. And you got to hold on. Don't throw in the towel. I don't want you to quit. Yes, I know. I know we've been made endure for a night, but and his anger is but for a moment, and we've been made endure for a night, but joy going to come in the morning. Yes, I know it may, even though what we are experiencing right now, this is what Peter was doing to encourage those brothers and sisters that have come to the Lord and have gotten saved. He was letting them know that 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 God got something better for you. It's a blessing. I thank God for the blood that He shed. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But then God got and been filled with His precious Holy Ghost. But God got something better on the other side. And this is why you ought to be able to praise Him. This is why you ought to be able to lift Him up. This is why you ought to be able to. To give him glory and honor. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you my brothers and sisters. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He says now wherefore gird up. The lines of your mind. The lines of prepare your minds. For actions. Prepare your minds for actions. And be sober and hold to the end, to the end, to look forward, to look to the future. Don't get stuck. Look to the future. For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now here we go. This is where I want the 14th verse. He says, as obedient children, as obedient children, as obedient children, as those that continue to be In submission and submissive as obedient children, a test of obedience, a test, a test of obedience, a test, a test. My God. He says, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the formal desires, but as obedient children, according to the formal lusts, in your ignorance not knowing in your ignorance not knowing the thing that we were ignorant of we didn't know so we don't want to go back to we now we want to is a test of our obedience we've been tested we're being we're being tried it's a test now to see 
where people be obedient, where they still follow God, where they still do what God instructed them to do. Because Jesus Christ himself was obedient. And death to end on the cross, him dying. And so now the, the fact that we have got saved and you are saved, now you're in the church, you're on the Lord's side, now your obedience is being tested to see when you still obey God, to see when you still hearken, to see when you still listen, to see when you still be committed, to see when you still be dedicated. When we know God, every God is watching everything, but when, 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 when man, when you abide yourself, are you still, do you still have a committed prayer life? Are you still obedient to praying? Are you still obedient to studying? Are you still obedient to fasting? Are you still obedient to, to uh, uh, serving God? And here Peter is expressing this to them as obedient children. Not fashion yourself. Not be pulled back into the way that we was once living and, the, and what God delivered us out. Into the form of the strong desires, intense desires, our lusts. Because when man is tempted, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, even James talks about lust. Not fashion yourself, but continuing to do what God instructs you to do. Because you know, you know what to do. You know you've been instructed what to do. Are you still doing what you've been instructed to do? Because when we read on down, as he talks about, but as which he has called you is holy, my God. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness a way of life. Are you still, do you still, are, are you, have, have you regrets? Or have you? Have you, have you, are, are you feeling stronger? Stronger. In the midst of, of the way things have been for the last year and even going into this year. You know, it's a, so are you, have you been doing self evaluation, self examination, maintenance type stuff? What is your mindset? Hallelujah. And so now this is why he tells them to, to, to prepare yourself for action, to keep, to, keep to, to remember that you still got to keep doing what God has instructed you to do. Still got to be a servant. You still got to. I'm still a preacher. I'm still a pastor. I'm still a father. I'm still a husband. I'm still a brother. I'm still, you still because you're not in the actual sanctuary, but God still got a calling on your life. Hallelujah. God got a calling on your life. And as God works this thing out, because for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. And when he called us, God called us. Hallelujah. He didn't call us because of our own works, but it was because of his own purpose. His own purpose. God saved you. My God, it's a blessing that God has, that he rescued you. Rescued me. Delivered me. Brought me out. And so now it is, it is within yourself that obedience, the possibility of obedience got to be on the inside. Because if it's on the inside, then it will be reflected and manifest on the outside. And so what we've got to look forward to Look forward, look into the future, knowing that God's going to work things out. 
And this Peter is trying to encourage those saints, encourage them, them that would experience some hardship. I want you to be encouraged, but then I want you to still have your obedience is being tested. Not as fashion yourself according to the form of lust. James talks about lust. 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 Go to, uh, turn to James. We're going to go to James, the first chapter, right quick. Hallelujah. James. The book of James. Listen to what James says here about lust. And this is why you have to be very careful. Because if you don't continue to uh, to allow your yourself to have a mindset and a mentality of obedience, you will find yourself regressing. Listen to what James says. And then I'm going to start. Jack, I'm going to start in the first verse of the first chapter of James. He said, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptation, different temptation, so you count it all joy. Knowing this, which you got to know that the trying of your faith will work some patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid is not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. And let not that man think. So when you are struggling with. When you are struggling with obedience. These are some of the manifestation of the characteristics. That you will, you will not only portray or possess. Because you're struggling with obedience. A test of your obedience. For he that, for, for the sixth verse, for let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavers like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man. I want to be saved, and then I'm struggling with the world. I want to do what God say do, then I'm still struggling. I'm struggling to keep obeying his word, to follow his instructions. But I want to be saved. So a double-minded man is unstable. Unstable. You don't have no stability. A double-minded man don't have no stability. But you got to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I'm telling you now. Because when you walk in obedience and do what God say to you, then you plant yourself firmly in the word of God. Then, hey, when the wind blows, you may sway, and you may sway, but my God, you won't be uprooted because I'm planted, my God, in the word of God. Hallelujah. But a double-minded man, one moment you want to be saved, and one moment you're struggling. A double-minded man is unstable, cannot get no stability. Let the brother of low degree Rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen 
with a burning heat, but it is withered. The grass and the flowers there are forest, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. My God. So also shall the rich man fade away in all his ways. Oh my goodness. But look at here. Here we go. The 12th verse now. When he tells us over in Peter to not as obedient children, not walking, not fashioning yourselves to the form of lust. Blessed now, 12th verse. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, He shall receive the crown of life. One of the crowns. Mm -hmm. The different crowns. The crown received when he which he has, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Lust. Desires. It can be connected with sexual desires, with strong, intense desires. Every man is drawn away of his own lust and is enticed. Entice. It has become entertaining, exciting. Lust. Then when lust, listen at now the steps. When lust has conceived, when conception takes place in lust. Same way through natural reproduction, some has to furl, some has to happen. The egg, the sperm. So when lust has conceived, conception, it bring, it will bring forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. And James tells us, do not err. Do not err, my beloved brother. Because the steps, one step take you to another. Hallelujah. Lust conceived, it take you to another step. Sin. Sin is finished, it brings forth death. But to just stop it. And so now when Peter, when we read in Peter, he said, as obedient children, because what's going to be tested is your obedience to God. I'm telling you. Your obedience to God is going to be tested. And that's what's being tested in now. An adversary will test it, and you'll find yourself even now in some, some situations where your obedience to God is being tested. When you think nobody may not see you, nobody not watching you, but God sees everything. A test of your obedience. As obedient children, not fashion yourself to the lust, form of lust, to the things. To these strong desires and even some sexual desires, intense desires, in in your ignorance, in what you in what you didn't know, but then something we were aware of what we were doing. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy. And all manner of conversation. Because your obedience is being tested. It's being tested. And we're going to look at some other places where the obedience of man was tested. When God instructed them to do. If they did not walk in obedience, chose to do what they wanted to do. 
And that's not the mindset that you should have. But you got to, as obedient children, not in the form of lust, not in the way we used to do things, but God has a new way. And God has a better way of doing things. Because not only what God is doing to bless you now, but he's preparing you for the future. And what you got to look forward to the future. You got to look forward to God bringing us through. You got to look forward to God bringing you out. You got to look forward to God turning this situation around. You've been hearing me say, God, God is coming around the curve. Coming around the curve. And so we're continuing to pray for you your family, but I submit to you that all of our obedience to God is being tested. And I hope you pass the test. I love you and praying for you and your family. In Jesus' name.